Hello and welcome to our video on System D4 Key Clock presented by Mahmoud Niyaz from IT Pro Guide. In the last video, I was always running start command to start the key clock, but which is not a practical solution in a production environment, right? Even in a test environment, you cannot log in all the time and uh, start the key clock services it's supposed to start automatically and it's supposed to be available before any other services because this service is how you're going to log in or authorize and authenticate your applications and this can be achieved automatic startup can be achieved using systemd it is not something from key clock uh, those who know linux i'm sure they are aware about it systemd is a linux in uh, initialization system provide tools to help the system administrator related tasks. So with systemd, you can start, stop, restart the services automatically. How are we gonna do this? The steps are here. First, you create a systemd file named keyclock.service. In this file, we define the service, user, group, and other informations that require to start up the keyclock service. Once you're done, we can type enable command so that it is configured to start when the system boot automatically. Other commands are also there to start the key clock, to stop the key clock, uh, to restart, uh, to get the status. So we will uh, see while we moving to the next slides. So I'm, I'm sure that this is not new for you, but I will detail a bit for a good understanding. So the first step, let's create the file keyclock.service under systemd run the command sudo nano then etc systemd system slash keyclock.service now we have the file ready so the first thing we're gonna add inside this file is a unit section where we have two key and a value have to add one is the description so here in the description, we provide something that makes sense uh, to understand about this application. So for us, it's easy, it's key clock. Then the second one is after. So by adding this instruction in the systemd file, we tell the systemd to start the key clock only after the network is ready and PostgreSQL service has successfully started. So that is what the after means. Let's add the unit into our so i'm adding the unit section description and after keywords and their values the next session in systemd is a service section here we have more key values to add so we start with the type which delay the service until all jobs are dispatched then we provide the user and the group that want uh, to execute this application then the success exit code then timeout uh, stop second so time to wait uh, for the service to stop before it uh, forcibly uh, terminating it then uh, restart so in case if the service fail it can retry by itself if you make the restart on then also the wait time uh, before restarting the service after a failure also you can uh, configure so these are the minimum things that you need uh, so that's uh, what i provided let's add this to our file so let's add the values one by one, the type, user, then group, exit start, then success exit status, timeout, restart, and restart second. Finally, we have the install section. This means the service is designed to start automatically under the conditions when the system is ready for the operation. So I'm going to add the final key values. So we are done with the file. When we configure the systemd file, we give username key clock and a group name key clock. Uh, so these users and groups we need to create and also we need to provide access for this user and group to the uh, directory the key clock directory but i'm going to show you uh, how uh, we start the key clock service using the system d and how we're going to understand it, it is failed because we don't have the user access or we don't have the permission to the directory 
So before we create and provide access, I'm going to try to start the server. The first step is to reload the system D uh, so that the changes will be available to the system D file. Then we can enable the key clock uh, to start in the boot. So sudo systemctl, then enable, then key clock dot service. So that is done. Now we are going to uh, start the key clock. So for that, run sudo systemctl, then start key clock dot service. As we don't have the username group created and also we don't have a permission to access that uh, particular location for those users then this is gonna fail but we don't know it failed or not because uh, for us it seems like it's uh, started right because the command has completed successfully so we are going to find the status of this service so just change start to status the same line of command will give you it's failed and you can see that the failed at step user so that makes sense something related to the user so we have to create the user you can also run uh, get and, and identify whether this account exists or whether the uh, group exists this can also be uh, done uh, using the following commands and if it is not available then of course you create a user and a group then provide the necessary permission and as you can see there is nothing returned for both the commands so we're gonna create a group first called key clock then we're gonna create a user with no login so it's a service account And now we're going to check the same accounts are accessed or not with the same commands. As you can see, they get and provide us the group and the user exist now. The next step is to assign permission to the key clock folder. So key clock is in opt slash opt slash key clock. But the users that we created doesn't have permission at this time. So we are going to change the ownership of the folder and also provide access to the directories and subdirectories. Now run the ch on command, then mention the user and group, then you provide the path. So this is going to change the ownership. Then you also run the commands for the directories and files permission. Now we have everything ready. We are set. And these are the list of commands some we already uh, try to run a bit early so these are the commands that you need to run uh, reload the systemd file then you can enable key clock service using systemctl enable then you can start stop restart if you want to check the logs then you can use the last command journal ctl so here i'm going to reload the systemctl then we're going to start the key clock service now the service seems running and you can check the status and in the status also it is showing that it is active and running and the second way to test is of course browse the url and try to see it is available or not so i'm gonna browse to key clock yes it's responding that means the key clock is available and it able to start using the systemd file so that's it let's summarize what we have done we created a systemd uh, file 
for key clock then we provided information in three sections unit then service then install in the unit we explained that what are the services that the key clock need to wait to make sure it is ready then in the service section we provided the information about the location of the uh, file installed and also the user who have permission to access this then we also provided the permission and then we able to use the tools that provided by system ctl uh, to to start stop to manage and to check the logs of the uh, key clock so that's it thank you for watching see you in the next one